Hey there, my friends, and welcome to this excerpt from a very, very special interview I did with author, musician, and monster hunter Lyle Blackburn. You can find out more about him at lyleblackburn.com. I first spoke with Lyle probably about 11 and a half, 12 years ago or so, when the Beast of Boggy Creek was brand new. And I wanted to touch base with him again, and I thought we'd go back to his original first book. And he has written on various cryptids and swamp creatures and uh, alleged beasts that live out there uh, amongst us. And fascinating, fascinating guy. Really cool guy. He is the uh, founder and um, lead singer of Ghoul Town, which is a great group. You can find them on Apple Music. They've got several albums of really, really good rock. And I think you will uh, really enjoy them. They they blend a bunch of different genres together. But he is very, very multi-talented. He spends a lot of time investigating these alleged cryptids, if you will, these legendary beasts. And we're trying to see if they really exist out there. And this interview focuses on the Beast of Boggy Creek. And some of you may be familiar with the 1972 film, The Legend of Boggy Creek. It's dealing with the same creature that many people in... Um, Southwest Arkansas have allegedly seen over the decades. So please sit back and enjoy this excerpt. I say it excerpt because I saved the full interview for the paid subscribers, which I hope you will become one day. Whether you are just a kind of a casual listener or you are trying out the uh, seven-day free trial, whatever the case may be of my podcast, please, please, please join today. Join today. It's a dollar a month. Come to patreon.com slash Spencer Hughes, and you can hear the 65 or whatever it is minute long interview with Lyle Blackburn, along with hundreds and thousands of other pieces of content and other podcast episodes from the last several years. The archive is immediately open to you. So please join the podcast. I really need your help. I'm not exaggerating. I, I struggle to keep the lights on and I don't know how much longer I can continue the podcast with it losing money every month. I can't keep losing money. So I need your support. We are heard on this version of the podcast in 54, is it 54 countries? Why did I lose it here? I just had it up on the screen. Let me, let me go to it real quick here. I'm going to go check here the stats. It's really phenomenal when you look at all the places that are listening to the podcast but aren't paying for it. So I need you to start paying for it if you can. 54 countries, for God, God's sakes. 940 cities around the world. If all of you listening to my voice right now, all of you listening, were to join the Patreon, I could do this full time. It would be a dream come true. I could do this full time if everybody just spent a buck a month. So please do that today patreon.com slash Spencer Hughes. All right, without further ado, without further gratuitous self-promotion, it's really survival is what it is. It's not self-promotion. It's survival to keep the podcast alive. It, it has come down to that. we got to keep the podcast going. We can't do it uh, unless you pay for it. I mean, that's the honest to God truth. So come join it. And here is an excerpt from this interview. You will want to hear the entire thing. Trust me. Lyle Blackburn on his first book, The Beast of Boggy Creek. Enjoy, and drop your comments down below and let me know what you think about the podcast. It's Hughes from the Heart. Our Paranormal Mysteries of the World edition. We do these once in a while, and I love doing them. Where we talk about the mysterious, the unexplained, all sorts of weird phenomenon. From UFOs. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, they called them UFOs. Now they call them UAPs, because uh, that's what they like to do: is redefine everything to confuse people. <laughs> One area that I'm fascinated by, well, in addition to hauntings, I lived in a very, very haunted uh, home. My family and I did in California for several years, and boy, that would turn any skeptic into a believer. I'm telling you. So I'm very big into hauntings and what those may or may not be. I, I have no idea. I, I approach all of this from the subject, from the standpoint rather, of not knowing what the heck is going on. I have no idea. I have no idea. And that adds to the mystery 
The one area that I'm really fascinated by is the area of cryptids, especially now that we've moved. Well, we, we lived in an area not too far away from Bigfoot country in Northern California. That's where I was born and raised. And my wife was born and raised. And almost six years ago, we moved up to the Pacific Northwest. We're in the woods now. And it turns out that our county has had a lot of uh, Bigfoot sightings over the decades. I didn't know that initially when we moved here, but that's pretty fascinating to know. But we're not too far away from the Olympic National Forest, where there have been many, many, many Bigfoot sightings. And Washington State has a lot of alleged Bigfoot sightings. We're going to talk about a related creature, but this one in Arkansas. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful book. I love this book. I bought an autographed copy. He signed it for me himself at a convention that I went to. It was my first ever paranormal convention I went to with a good friend in Sacramento, uh, boy, 12 years ago or something. And that's where I met our guest, Lyle Blackburn. He signed The Beast of Boggy Creek for me. And that's the last time we spoke was about 11, 12 years ago on the podcast. And it was much different then. And I wanted to revisit that book. And by the way, if you go to his website and click on his store, you can get a, a signed copy of this sent to you. The Beast of Boggy Creek book. He has written many other books. And uh, he actually has a band, too, which I've been listening to, and I, I love them. They've got several, several albums. Ghoul Town, you may have heard of them. And they do performances and concerts all the time. And he's, he's a busy guy. Family guy, uh, monster hunter, musician, author, and we welcome back to the uh, podcast, Lyle Blackburn. Lyle, good to hear from you. How how you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me back uh, all these years later. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I want to know, first of all, before we get into Boggy Creek and all this fascinating stuff, I'm fascinated by the fact that you're older than I am by a few years, but you look about 25 years younger, and and you don't seem to you're you're you don't age. You're like Dick Clark. How do you what what blood of what creature are you drinking to stay so young looking? I don't understand it, but you look great, and it seems like you don't you don't age at all. And I'm looking at current pictures, and I'm comparing them to like 20 years ago, and you look like the exact same guy. <laughs> Is it the monster hunting that keeps you young, or the music, or or what? Uh, I suppose uh, a little both, maybe, uh, you know, rock, uh, rock and roll keeps you young, of course. And, uh, you know, I think when you have a career, the monster hunter, you know, you just naturally, uh, <laughs> shielded from all those adult things that, <laughs> that maybe people are subject to that cause aging or, or maybe people, people think I'm a vampire. So I, I, I may roll with it. <laughs> sure. Why not? Why not? Well, you've written a lot of books, and, and I hope you're okay with us going back to kind of what I think is like kind of the granddaddy of them all, because The Beast of Boggy Creek is such a, all your books are good, but this one is so good, and it's kind of, this is the one that kind of propelled you, right, from um, The Legend of Boggy Creek, which was a movie that came out when, in 72? That was a very important movie for a lot of people. Right, 72, yeah. Yeah, and this is the movie that, that got a lot of people, such as yourself, fascinated by uh, kind of Bigfoot and cryptids and the fact that you're a native Texan who grew up not too far away from uh, Falk. I, I always in my head think I'm saying that wrong because it, it's it's a weirdly spelled um, town, but Falk, Arkansas, right? Is that how you say it? Right. It, it was named after a, a guy named George Falk. So that's where the name came from. But yeah, you're saying it right. Okay, good, good. And so you grew up not too far away from there. And you saw this movie that uh, I just saw the trailer again, because I haven't seen this movie in years. But I saw the trailer, which you can now find on YouTube, which of course, you couldn't do back then, you know, you, you had to either see movies like that in the theater, or they came out on VHS. And then you wore them out to death by playing them over and over again. But I saw that trailer, and for a movie that's almost as old as I am, that thing still scares the hell out of me. That scream at the end of the trailer, and just, it, it's funny because I, um, they didn't think we could pause movies, and you know the resolution wasn't all that great back then, but I paused it a couple times with, with the monster pops out, and it looks like just kind of a gorilla mask, you know what I mean? Like you could see like the person, they didn't even black out the eyes 
around the, the cut cutout holes for the eyes. But that scares me even more. It reminded me kind of almost of uh, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it still terrifies. So tell us a little bit about that first, your, your experience with that movie, because you were a kid, obviously, and uh, it must have been far scarier than seeing it for the first time. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, over the years, so many people have come up to me and said, oh, man, you know, that scared the blank out of me. You know, when I was dead, the same thing you just said, it, it, it had the same effect on everybody. And when I saw it, um, my father's a bow hunter and we had hunted in Texas. And, you know, when you hunt, you you go out to rural, rural areas and creepy small towns and all that kind of stuff. So I was familiar with the settings of the movie. You know, they were places I, you know, I had been, so to speak, even though I hadn't been to Falk. But when I saw the movie and combined, you know, this hairy, scary Bigfoot creature with, you know, this sort of backwoods setting, it, it just was like oh man, you know, it scared me because not only was the movie scary, but now I had to think in my mind, okay, when we're out hunting and my dad sticks me in a, you know, a ground blind somewhere and then he goes off somewhere, am I, <laughs> am I subject to an attack, you know? So, but it was all great. And, and just the fact, you know, that I lived close enough, I mean, it was in Arkansas, but it was, it's right on the border, uh, right near Texarkana, which is the border of Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, that it was close enough to, to my home and part of that Piney Woods area of East Texas that went on up into uh, Southern Arkansas. It, it had just a profound effect on me. So eventually, as I decided to sort of pursue this kind of research, and I wanted to know the true story behind the movie, because it was based on you know, real sightings, and there was newspaper articles and all kinds of media coverage and all, the whole thing. And the movie was, uh, you know, just a mega hit in the 70s. It, it, you know, I wanted to revisit that and learn the truth. And that's kind of where it started for me as sort of a public figure or a, and an author is when I went up there and started looking into it. So when The Beast of Boggy Creek came out, and at that time, you know, that was the first book, and I'm doing a lot of interviews uh, with you and everybody else, I began to realize how how many people loved this movie and how it had sort of been forgotten in a way. And I kind of, you know, was was happy to kind of revitalize that. And of course, since then, I mean, there's things that have happened that I couldn't even have imagined. Like we've, uh, I've worked with the director's daughter, uh, Pamela Pierce, the daughter of Charles B. Pierce, the director of The Legend of Boggy Creek. And she's uh, worked to remaster and restore the movie with Eastman Kodak. So we've released uh, that on HD Blu-rays, and I've done a commentary track on Blu-ray and all this stuff that um, continues to uh, propel the film to new audiences and to give something to those who, you know, want to see it in its best format and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's... The whole movie is just, I'm wrapped up in The Legend of Boggy Creek in some surreal way as now part of my everyday life, really. Wow, that's fascinating. And just to put things in perspective, we had the Vietnam War raging, as you mentioned in Chapter 1 of your book. We had the, the Manson murders who had already taken place, uh, Kent State Massacre uh, within a couple of years of this. And... By the way, one thing I had forgotten completely was, even though I met uh, Bob Giblin a couple years ago on a Bigfoot hunt, actually not too far away from where I live here in Washington State, and it was, <laughs> the talk about surreal, um, shaking the hand of somebody involved with probably the most famous and still really undebunked, if you will, footage of Bigfoot that we've ever had, which was the Patterson-Gimlin tape of uh, the late 60s. So this was about five years after that. So all this stuff was going on. I mean, we had the most famous footage of Bigfoot. Uh, maybe at the time we didn't know it, but you know, all these decades later, it's still kind of the granddaddy of all the footage out there. And then this comes out. Um, tell us a little bit about F Falk, Arkansas, and especially during this time, what are we talking about in terms of like population and density and and just a little bit of the geography of, of Falk first, and then we'll get into some of these sightings. Yeah, I mean, Falk is a very, very small town, um, and it still is. Back in, 
in the early 70s, the population was around 500. And today it's only eight or 900, perhaps. Um, it's, it's located um, within about 20 minutes of Texarkana, which is a, a larger city. But it, it's definitely a world away because it's located in uh, near the Sulphur River bottoms. And that's a wild country down there where the Sulphur River uh, networks in with various bayous like Mercer Bayou. And it's fed by Boggy Creek and Days Creek and a bunch of other waterways. And it's a lot of, you know, lowland hardwood habitat that really can't be developed because it, it is just so swampy and and rugged. So, um, Falk, you know, at the time was just this little town just on the edge of, of such a wild country that, you know, it, it seemed, it, it seemed to support the fact that something, uh, strange and unknown could be living down there because there were just miles uh, of this, uh, thick, you know, thick area. So over time, people had come forward and talked about stories of seeing this sort of hairy thing. And of course, prior, really prior to the, to the Patterson Gimlin film, which came out, which was filmed in 1967, and then kind of wasn't really heavily circulated till early seventies, no one in Arkansas even really knew what Bigfoot was. You know, they would describe seeing this big, hairy, they would call it a wild man or say it looked like a gorilla, but it wasn't. It walked upright on two legs. Uh, they just did their best to, to describe it. But um, it wasn't until May of 1971 until uh, uh, an incident that is dramatized at the end of the movie made it to the Texarkana Gazette newspaper. So everything prior to that was just sort of word of mouth and uh, you know, circulated around the community, but nobody outside of that really knew anything about sightings of a so-called monster. Um, so, you know, the the Falk area today is is still just on the edge of the Sulphur River bottoms, and um, a lot of that land is still exactly the same as it was. And wow. you know, I've gone to various locations that were seen in the movie and. Even one of the houses that was featured in the movie still stands. And I mean, it literally just looks just like it did in the 70s. And, you know, of course, there's been some development and they put a kind of a, a major highway that runs through part of it. But there's nothing on the highway. There's hmm. no billboard. There's no gas stations. It just cuts through um, wow. right through the. So other than that, uh, it's still quite a remote space. And and there's still sightings reported there to to, to this day, really. Wow. Fascinating stuff. Really, really fascinating guy. I love Lyle Blackburn. You can hear the rest of this interview, and there's so much more. There's like 45 more minutes of this interview where we really dig deep into his book, The Beast of Boggy Creek, his first of many books he's written over the years, and he's working on a new one. And all of this is discussed in the full version of the interview. I hope you will just decide today is the day you are going to join my Patreon, where you will have access to this full interview, along with hundreds of and actually thousands of pieces of content from video to audio podcasts to all sorts of cool things that I share with you on Hughes from the Heart. I am really, really, I'm not begging, but I really am imploring you to consider joining the podcast. There's even a seven-day free trial, for goodness sake. So there's really nothing to lose and everything to gain and all for a dollar a month. I mean, why would you even think about it too much? Join the podcast. I promise you will love it. It's the best dollar a month you will ever spend. I often joke, and it's true, and I have Mexican blood in me. I'm, I'm half Mexican, <laughs> so I'm telling you, this is not like a racial joke, but it's true. A dollar a month cannot buy you a bottled water at a taco truck. It just can't. Certainly not at a baseball stadium. God, we went to a Mariners game, and the bottled water was like six or seven or eight bucks for a bottle of water. That'll get you damn near six months to a year of this podcast. For one bottle of water at a Mariners game. So keep things in perspective. You're not going to choke over a dollar a month. I promise it's not going to bankrupt you. But I really do need your support. The lights are flickering. I can't keep the lights on on the podcast forever without people paying for it. I really do need your paid support. Buck a month. That's all I ask. If everyone listening to my voice were to do it, uh, I think I could do this full time. But I cannot do it at all 
without your help. Please go to patreon.com slash Spencer Hughes. A dollar a month is all we ask. Thank you very much, and thanks for listening to this excerpt of the entire interview that I did with Lyle Blackburn, author, musician, and monster hunter. You can find out more about Lyle at lyleblackburn.com. You can order his books, and you'll even he'll even autograph them for you. Find out where he's appearing next. He does a lot of conventions and things like that. And you can join me at patreon.com slash Spencer Hughes. Thanks a lot. I need your support. I want your support. I hope I will get your support today. Much love.